BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to BBOR, the home of True Crime Talk Radio and your premier destination for unsolved mysteries, criminal psychology, and exploring the dark side of cyberspace. My name is Ned DeHaan, and I am your host as well as the creator of Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube, and regular contributor to the Zodiac Killer channel. And a great way to support these shows is just by listening to some more content. But you can also go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse, written by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. Let the show begin. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Friday. Another Anything Goes Friday. Welcome to the show. How's everybody doing? So, if this is the first video that you've clicked on from this channel, my name is Ned Dahan, and I do a regular segment on Mondays about the Zodiac Killer, which has been shaped into the Zodiac Killer news report, but it will always be known as Zodiac Monday. So, a family member recently asked me a question. Will you write a Zodiac Killer book? And I've been asked this by some of you guys in the comments section a few times, and the short answer is no, for the following reason. There are lots of Zodiac Killer books out there, and I would only want to write something about a particular true crime case if I felt that I were genuinely contributing something that is not already heard on Black Box Online Radio. By the way, there are more than a thousand episodes of Black Box Online Radio covering all types of subjects, any subject under the sun or in the darkness. However... A book that I have been contemplating writing is about the relationships among different serial killers. And it's more like influences rather than relationships. I mean, when you think of just a bunch of different serial killers on a timeline, maybe that the word relationship would come to mind. But the influences. And the reason why I would rather think about that is I am someone who believes that the answers to several serial killer mysteries will be found in the Jack the Ripper case, as you see from the title of this episode. And it's definitely the Zodiac Killer, but also, almost definitely, the New Orleans Axeman who operated in 1918 and 19, as well as possibly before that. And maybe, just maybe, the Phantom Killer who operated in Texarkana in 1946. These killers may have been trying to emulate from Jack the Ripper. And firstly, I have to give a shout-out to Batman66, who made the request for some more Zodiac Killer, Jack the Ripper, or D.B. Cooper content. And as I said, I do the regular Monday segment about the Zodiac Killer. However, this is a Jack the Ripper episode that I've been meaning to do for some time, and it is going to be focused on the Openshaw letter. However, first, if you would like to support any of these efforts... And for future episodes, I invite you to go over to buymeacoffee.com. There's a link to that in the description box. Buymeacoffee.com allows you to make a donation or contribution to help support the show, and anybody who makes a donation will get a shout-out on Zodiac Mondays. And there is also the Super Thanks on YouTube that is available for that purpose. But some of you close followers of BBOR will remember that I did a brief segment on the Open Shawl Letter in one of the Zodiac Killer news reports, but I did not do a full episode on it, so some of it might seem a little familiar, but Jack the Ripper was a serial killer who operated in 1888 in England, and this is perhaps the world's most famous unsolved murder mystery. Jack the Ripper really had a very small reign of terror, only operating in the summer and fall of 1888, August 31st to November 9th of that year, but what truly gives Jack the Ripper the place in history is a collection of two things. The first, the mutilations. 
Jack the Ripper mutilated the bodies of his victims, with the exception of uh, the third one, Elizabeth Stride, also known as Long Liz Stride, and Jack the Ripper also mailed in letters, allegedly. And earlier this year on the channel, I did some episodes about the Dear Boss letter, the Saucy Jackie postcard, and the From Hell letter. With the Zodiac Killer mystery, there are numerous authentic communications. I mean, going from July 31st of 1969 all the way into 1971 with the Pleasanton letter, and then resurfacing again in 1974 with the Exorcist letter. So many authentic Zodiac communications that have been more or less verified to the satisfaction of the authorities. But when I was reading about Jack the Ripper, I was rather shocked that there were only three letters that are given strong consideration about actually coming from this mysterious killer who mutilated the bodies of women. And they are the Dear Boss letter, the Saucy Jackie postcard, and the From Hell letter. The Openshaw letter is thought to have been an either an unauthentic or unconfirmed letter that belonged to Jack the Ripper. And to give us the most basic introduction, I'm going to read off some very basic internet sources here. The Openshaw letter is an alleged communication from Jack the Ripper sent to Dr. Thomas Horrocks Openshaw at the London Hospital on October 29th of 1888. Dr. Openshaw had recently analyzed the kidney that had been mailed accompanying the From Hell letter, and it's actually a, it's actually half of a kidney, and as I understand it, the From Hell letter is sent without even saying the name Jack the Ripper, and it's half of a kidney that is preserved in some type of solution that smelled like alcohol. But what's important to note is that the original From Hell letter and the box containing the kidney no longer exist, so they can't truly be analyzed. Openshaw had recently analyzed the kidney, which had been sent with the From Hell letter, to George Lusk, the Vigilance Whitechapel Committee Chairman, on October 16th. The envelope was addressed to Dr. Openshaw, pathological curator of the London Hospital Whitechapel, and was postmarked London E, October 29th, 1888. This is the text of the Openshaw letter. Old boss, you was right. It was the left kidney I was going to operate again, close to you, hospital, just as I was going to draw my knife along her bloomin' throat. Them cusses of copper spoiled the game, but I guess I will be on the jobbin' soon again. Soon, and we'll send you another bit of innards, Jack the Ripper. Oh, have you seen the devil with his microscope and scalpel looking at a kidney with a slide cocked up? And I'm going to share with you guys my absolute immediate first response to this. I thought the open shawl letter was a childish imitation. Someone had seen the from hell letter. And then they decided to create the open shawl letter as a poorly done copycat. But, but, I mean, I have time to think about these things. I did begin to notice that it does seem to be completely consistent with the timeline of Jack the Ripper. As I said, the Dear Boss letter is mailed, that's the first one. Then the Saucy Jackie postcard, which takes credit for the double event. And then... The double event is the murder of Liz Stride and the murder of Catherine Eddowes. Now, Catherine Eddowes is the victim whom they think the kidney was cut out of and then cut in half and then mailed in with the From Hell letter. Absolutely horrific stuff. So that's what um, he's talking about when he says the left kidney, and it was her left kidney that was cut out and mailed in with the From Hell letter. All, all unconfirmed, mind you. Because... As one of you guys in the comments section pointed out, they didn't have DNA testing back in 1888. And when I did the uh, responses in the past talking about um, some of the people's theories in Jack the Ripper, the one person that I agreed with was Dr. Sedgwick Saunders, who said that people should have admitted when they did not know something. The male fe kidney and the female kidney would have been identical to medical practitioners at the time, and also, upon close, uh, with, uh, without close examination, the kidney of a pig is also extremely similar to that of a 
person, and it could have even been a pig's kidney that had been cut in half and mailed in. Now, I don't know how likely that is. I mean, I have to be very honest with you guys. I'm not a medical doctor, but the point is, this thing was preserved in alcohol for, um, so it was all, it's a natural state would have been altered quite substantially, and it's some type of alcoholic solution, to be clear. It doesn't mean that it's preserved in something just like pure alcohol or an alcoholic drink, some type of spirit of such, they say in the letters. Another thing that I did notice is that this has a very esoteric Jack the Ripper language. Jack the Ripper, as I said, wrote the Dear Boss letter, and this says Old Boss, and then it talks about the kidney being cut out and mailed. That is also something. And then Jack the Ripper is talking about wanting to do his thing. And notice here, though, it says Spoiled the Game that um, I was going to draw my knife along her bloomin' throat, them cusses of copper spoiled the game. Now, as I said, the mystery of Jack the Ripper will give us answers to the Zodiac Killer mystery, because some of you guys are already thinking about the Zodiac Killer's Halloween card, which was mailed on October 27th of 1970, which states, I know you ache to know my name, but then why spoil the game? And I've said this very clearly on the channel, I think the Zodiac Killer was a cheap 20th century Jack the Ripper knockoff. Yes, I absolutely stand by that. And to the credit of a program like the Infographics Show, they even pointed out that the Zodiac Killer was just a bland, mild coward compared to the horrific nature of Jack the Ripper. Not to say that Jack the Ripper was brave. No, no. Jack the Ripper was a deranged and terrible person, but the Zodiac Killer is still a coward nonetheless. Here's some other esoteric language that would have been included in the Ripper case. He wants to draw his, draw my knife along of her bloomin' throat. Them cusses of copper spoiled the game. The Jack the Ripper talked about how he was trying to murder the third victim, Liz Stride, but she squealed a bit, so then he had to find another victim. And this is one of the things that is so telling about the Ripper case. It's not even about the murders. Liz Stride was murdered, but her body was not mutilated. And, I mean, I think there's a rather low chance that Jack the Ripper actually committed that crime. Because when I did my episode on the murder of Liz Stride, I was talking about how there's this man that is seen walking with her for an extended period of time. And, I mean, it's it, it must be like even over an hour. But then... The Ripper is just spending all night with Liz Stride and then murders her, but he can't mutilate her. So 15 minutes later, Catherine Eddowes is attacked and mutilated. If he could have found another person so easily, or if he knew how to find another woman so easily, why would he spend all that time with Liz Stride? I mean, maybe, maybe just some type of personal connection to the way she looked, or something like that, some type of inner desire, and I'm playing both sides of the coin, I'm trying to actually weigh the merit of the idea, but to me that almost suggests that, okay, a victim like Catherine Eddowes would have been murdered, and Liz Stride was murdered just in the vicinity, so somebody took credit for it, and it's possible, it's possible that this is all the same killer, but I think there's a rather low chance that Liz Stride was an actual, genuine victim of the Ripper, and her body was actually found on the other side of Whitechapel Road compared to the other victims. So, I mean, there are lots of similarities between the language and ideas that are shared in the Openshaw letter and that of the other Jack the Ripper letters, and I'm really uncertain as to whether or not it could be authentic. At first, I thought absolutely not. Um, if I had to make a decision now, I probably would say not authentic. Someone had just learned about the Ripper case and then decided to recreate this one. But one website I've been using a lot over the last year is jacktheripper.org, and then they have a post here about it saying, On Friday, October 19th of 1888, the Star newspaper carried the following report on the piece of kidney that accompanied the From Hell letter which was sent to George Lusk. The portion of the kidney which was enclosed, according to the medical experts, had been preserved in some type of spirit of wine. The person from whom it was taken 
was probably alive three weeks since, a circumstance which fits with the suggestion that the organ may have been taken from the body of the deceased Catherine Eddowes, who was murdered in Mitre Square. Another fact is that the kidney is evidently from that of a person who was a considerable drinker, as there were distinct marks of disease. And as I said, this idea that it came from a pig, I think, is rather uncertain. The handwriting of the letter differs altogether from Jack the Ripper, from Jack the Ripper's specimens, of whose calligraphy had been recently published. Oh yes, the From Hell letter is written very, very differently. And then, some people even think that um, Catherine Eddowes was the only genuine victim of the Ripper. That's and then he's like, okay, well, so, so, some guy from a newspaper, maybe Frederick Best from said publication, The Star, was taking credit for this serial killer's murders, so he murdered Catherine Eddowes, and he wanted to prove that he was the actual killer. And when Dr. Andrea Nini did forensic linguistic analysis on the Ripper letters, she made the determination that the Saucy Jackie postcard and the From... <laughs> so I, I gotta say that again. The Saucy Jackie postcard and the Dear Boss letter were written by the same person, and I have episodes about both of those communications, and it's a rather convincing case once you read her findings in their entireties. But with the From Hell letter, that was excluded from that discussion, and that could also have been written by a different person. But some people think that this uh, this journalist named Frederick Best was taking credit for the Ripper murders, and there was a real serial killer out there who decided to take credit for his own crimes. Like, all right, well... Someone's pretending to be me, well, he's going to do it for real. All uncertain, mind you. These are theories that people have. Dr. Openshaw told a star reporter today after having examined the piece of kidney under the microscope, he was of opinion that it was half of a left human kidney. Okay, now we're going to stop right there. This thing from the star. This is information that is from the newspaper being published in the star, and it is now found in the Openshaw letter. You were right, it was the left kidney, and um, talking about that reference to the microscope. So, I think that also goes to show that somebody could have been reading up on the Jack the Ripper case, and then written the Openshaw letter as a prank. So, the East London Advertiser on the 20th of October, 1888, quoted Openshaw as saying that the kidney beneath from the from hell letter was a portion of a human kidney a guinea kidney that is to say one that belonged to a person who drank heavily he was of the opinion that it was the organ of a woman about 45 years of age and that it had been taken from the body within the last three weeks it will be within public recollection that the left kidney of them was missing from the woman catherine eddowes who was murdered in the mitre square okay so um now you might be thinking well if it didn't come from catherine eddowes where did it come from? And this is the next part of jacktheripper.org. A medical student's joke. From the outset, it appears that the police were of the opinion that the kidney and the from hell letter were, as the star had suggested on October 19th, nothing more than a silly prank carried out by a medical student. Medical student would have had access to the organs, cut it in half, and placed it into the, the alcoholic solution, whether it's wine or some other type of spirit or maybe even a stronger type of alcohol, and mail that in. And in an unsolved case, I hope people will not remove theories like that because a lot of people just simply don't want to hear that. They do not want to um, think that there wasn't actually a serial killer who cut apart someone's kidney, ate half of the kidney, and then mailed in the other half. And they just want to think that there were, no, there has to be just a single serial killer. But as we see from all of these serial killer mysteries that I, w I had been talking about, the Zodiac, the Phantom Killer, and the Axeman of New Orleans, there is a, a strong possibility that some of those cases actually have multiple perpetrators. The contemporary medical opinion on the kidney is, the majority of those doctors seem to have been of the opinion that the From Hell letter was a prank, missive that the accompanying kidney was a sick hoax. The This opinion appears to have been shared by police officers. Well, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I am uncertain as to whether or not the kidney actually came from Catherine Eddowes. The only thing that I feel confident enough to tell you is, 
I do not believe they actually determined that it came from a woman because of some of the scientific reasons that we said before. You can also go to my episode on the From Hell letter. But to continue with about the discussions on the Openshaw letter, I would like to go to the page that has been created for Thomas Horrocks Openshaw, an English Victorian and Edwardian era surgeon, perhaps best known for his brief involvement in the notorious Jack the Ripper murders. And there's even a section for him on a section on his page about Jack the Ripper. When a kidly purportedly from Jack the Ripper victim, Catherine Eddowes was posted to George Lusk, the chairman of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee, together with the From Hell letter, Lusk was persuaded by his fellow committee members to take them to Dr. Frederick Wiles, who was a surgeon nearby on Mile End Road. Wiles was out, so his assistant, F.S. Reed, examined the contents of the box and took the kidney to Thomas Openshaw at nearby London Hospital. Openshaw believed that the kidney was from the left side of the body, and, as stated previously from that news clipping from the Star, that was all published in the paper, or that's something that he went on the record about talking to the media, as Openshaw was frequently mentioned in press reports at the time in connection with the kidney and from Hell Letter, his name became widely known among the general public. On October 29, 1888, he received a letter through the post addressed to Dr. Openshaw, pathological curator, London Hospital, Whitechapel, and it was marked, it was postmarked London E, October 29th, 1888. So, I think that, um, if I have to share some concluding observations with you guys, it would, I would come to the determination that the contents of this letter are esoteric to Jack the Ripper, no doubt about it. There are definitive pieces of information that the Ripper genuinely had in the more authenticated letters, as well as the activities of the Ripper. There is genuine Jack the Ripper info here. But, because it was so easily available in newspapers, this does tend to seem like somebody who was following the case and perhaps tried to recreate the from hell letter handwriting and this is just maybe more in line with my first instinct this was a childish imitation of the from hell letter someone's even trying to make their letters look all squiggly and wiry and so on and i think that that's where i would leave it at but what do you think what do you think do you think this letter actually came from the killer or do you think that this letter was a prank, a hoax, not authentic, a forgery, something of that caliber? No right or wrong answers. In an unsolved case, we simply don't know, right? So put your ideas on the comment section down below. I'd love to read your messages. And I haven't even talked about the Ripper hoax theory in this episode yet. The idea that these murders were just unconnected. And that the journalist Frederick Best wrote the Dear Boss letter as a way to create publicity or create a news story that would sell a lot of papers. And he worked for the publication The Star, and it was very beneficial to them that he fabricated the Saucy Jackie postcard. And someone else fabricated the From Hell letter, and perhaps a different person altogether fabricated the Openshaw letter, meaning that... The killer never actually wrote any letters, and the murders were unconnected. You can also share your ideas about that in the comments section down below. But what do you think about the Openshaw letter? Does this seem to be in line with Jack the Ripper's other communications? I would love to read your messages, and anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box, and there is always... BlackboxNed88 over on Instagram, and I will see you there for the bonus podcast. Until next time.